When was the last time you took a leap of faith trusting that everything is going to work out? Do you crave growth or are you merely content with the status quo? If you want more out of your life, out of your career, and out of your relationships, you are in the right place. Take the leap and discover how to create a life by design rather than living it by default. Real success starts with you. Now here's your host, Colleen Biggs. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to another episode of Take the Leap. As always, I am your host, Colleen Biggs, and week after week, I bring you some amazing individuals uh, in their industries that I pretty much just fall in love with. You know, I'm introduced to a lot of individuals. Connecting is my favorite thing to do as an entrepreneur. It was also my favorite thing to do in the corporate world. So if you're listening to this and you're in the corporate world, Connect, connect, connect. I promise you in your entire life, that is one of the best things you can do is connect with people. Show them that you care. And that is why Steve Romano is here today because we're going to be talking all about doing business with a servant heart. And I have just loved that for so many years. And when I met Steve, I was like, oh, another person that has anything to do with the servant heart. I've got to meet you. I want to understand you. I want to know what you're doing and how I can serve you was the number one conversation that Steve and I had. And he's here today to dive more into how you can truly be unlimited successful in having a servant heart. We've been having some background conversations, which we'll get into a little bit today, on how we are seeing people run their businesses today. And they're definitely running it in their head. And as Clifford Starks talked about last week, people are running things in their head and not in their heart. So today's a great day to talk about being in your heart and how you can make those choices for success moving forward. But before we get to Steve, because I know we're all excited to, I want to thank Beyond Basil Mobile Pizzeria for being the sponsor of today's show. They're passionate about bringing their authentic flavors of Italy right to your event. Their mobile pizzeria is a culinary adventure on wheels where they craft artisanal pizzas using the finest ingredients and traditional Neapolitan techniques. Whether you're craving a classic margarita or looking to explore one of their unique flavor combinations. Their skilled pizziolas are here to create mouth-watering pizzas that will tantalize your taste buds. With their commitment to quality and exceptional service, they aim to provide an unforgettable dining experience for every one of your guests. Explore their menu, book us at their next event, or follow them on Instagram at Beyond Basil Pizza. Get ready to embark on a pizza journey like no other with Beyond Basil Mobile Pizzeria. You can find them online at beyondbasilmobilepizzeria.com to fill out a form and contact them today. Thank you, Beyond Basil. You have the most amazing pizza. So thank you for being out there in the world. All right, let's get to our guest, Steve Romano today. He um, he discovered his calling at a young age and is, I, I want to know how young, Steve, let me just 18 ask you. years old. 18 just years old. Okay at a young age, and is now on a mission to share his secret sauce for success. He's got lots of secret sauces. This show is, oh, and he thrives on forging meaningful connections, which I'll tell you he does, sharing referrals, he's amazing, and watching people flourish. His contagious passion for the law of increase makes his podcast doing business with a servant's heart so successful. This show is chock full of inspiring stories about overcoming challenges and serving others. He has a knack for spreading good vibes and elevating those around him. And I'm going to stop there because I will tell you, he is phenomenal and you're going to feel it through the audio today as you're listening to Steve talk. Steve, welcome to the show. Thank you, Colleen. I'm hungry after that sponsor. (laughs) When I come out to Arizona, I'm going to come have some pizza with you. (laughs) <laughs> I'm telling you, it's so good. It's so good. Uh, anyway, so Steve, you have a knack for spreading good vibes and elevating those around you. When did that start for you? You said at 18, right? So yes. do you think at 18 you discovered your calling and that was when things started changing for you? So what happened before you were 18? Well, I, you know, my dad was an entrepreneur. He was a contractor. He was started in the 50s and worked for himself and, and built a massive company did really well. And he always told me, take care of your people. Uh, Don't recreate the wheel, things like that, that were just stuck in my head. And we became really close. I didn't want to become a contractor, which probably, I don't know, we've never talked about. I think he would love for me to do that, but I did want to become an entrepreneur like my dad. 
I loved his schedule. He'd come to all my games, but he'd go back to work, but at least be there for family. And at 18, my family launched a health club. My cousin, my dad, and my uncle with a bunch of investors. And my cousin, who was the president, said, got out of high school, finished all my sports, and you get out of high school, you need to make some money. Yeah. And guess what? He asked me to work at the front desk. He said, sure, what a great gig. How easy. But what I found was building connections at 18 with 40, 50, 60-year-olds that were extremely successful in business. And I didn't realize it back then. And they became my friends. Hey, Steve, how was your vacation? Oh, it was great. We had a great time. We went here. Hey, Tony, how was your workout? You're getting strong. You know, you start having these conversations more of this. Hi, Tony. Bye, Tony. Mm -hmm. And one story I tell to everybody, Tony, this financial advisor, done really well, said, hey, he'd use his voice. Hey, kid. Call me kid. <laughs> Rough Italian guy. And just loved me. And he said, read this book, The Wealthy Barber. So he gave it to me about 60 pages. So I read it the next week I saw him and he goes, Hey kid, did you read the book? I said, yeah, from what I got from it was take 10% of my income, my check by that time it was $5 minimum wage for, you know, it was low, it was 78, 79 for younger people. Yeah. There was a 78, 79 year. Trust me. I was there. <laughs> yeah. And back in 78 and 79, saving money was going to make you rich. Doesn't anymore, but it did back then. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. But what I learned, and I built relations with many people. I might go to a restaurant. Hey, there's mm -hmm. Steve from Royal Courts. It was called Royal. Hey, there's Stay, Stay, hey, you know. And I started realizing this is pretty cool. We have a business, but I'm building these relationships and our business is growing because they're telling yes. people, hey, come see Steve, come see Jeff, my cousin, come see their customer service. You get a towel. We teach, and here's a great tip for business owners and their staff. It doesn't matter if it's a health club. So our, our front desk people would go, you want to tell their names. I don't know all their names. You don't have to. you got a computer screen in front of you. It was old. But when you slide their card, it says, Colleen, say, Colleen, have a great workout. Mm -hmm. Thanks I for did coming it, back again, Colleen. Mm -hmm. That little tip grew us from one of the top, you know, became one of the top health clubs uh, because of that customer service. But I, what Tony did, I'll go back to Tony, about 12 years later, at 30, I looked at that bank account. He said, forget about it. Especially in Italian, forget about it. I can't do the the <laughs> accent. I'm a California Italian, and it was fifty eight thousand dollars in there. I went, holy cow! Like you said, fifty eight thousand in was that nineteen uh, ninety? Yeah. yeah, oh nineties, yeah, yeah. You know, twelve years, yeah, ninety ninety one. You know, and I'm making okay money at the club, but I was like, holy man! Of course, as a kid, you know, thirty year old, I spent a lot, half of it, but. What I did is I reached out to Tony because I still was in connection. Again, I built a relationship. He had left the club, but we stayed in contact. Yeah. And I thanked him and I said, Hey, let me give you a thousand dollars. You know, you got paid for your advice. He goes, No, kid. You just listening and taking my advice. When you did that, it changed my world. I was able to retire earlier. So I realized the uh, the power, ROI, if you might say, of serving. He served me. It changed his universe. I never knew it for 12 years that he retired. You know, things happen like that. He retired early. And I learned, well, I'm going to keep doing this at the health club because we stayed in business for another 10 years and we built into three health clubs. Actually, we work with the 49er Ronnie Lott because my cousin, he was a, they'd come and work out and my cousin built a connection with him. Yeah. So I'd love to party with you. So connections are so powerful. They're kind of pushed to the side a little bit. Yeah, I connected with Colleen. No, I connected with Colleen. What can I do for? There's two different attitudes with that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I love that. I love that you said that because the connections are so powerful and you never know where they're going to lead or how they're going to assist. And it and sometimes you connect two people and you just don't think about it anymore. And then someone comes back a year later and says, you know, that one connection that you gave me to Steve Romano, let me tell you what that did for me. And you're like, wow, I had no idea. The two number one business rules 
is the reason why I built the Leap community. It's the reason why I have a podcast. It's a reason why I talk about being seen, being heard, and being visible is the number one is you got to tell everybody about you. So when you started the health club, you started telling everybody in the community that you were there. You did grassroots marketing. You did direct mail marketing. You did promotions. You had open houses, right? You did all kinds of things to tell people that you were there. That's step number one. That's just like getting people in the door. The second thing is build long lasting relationships. Something as simple as someone knowing their name, they're going to want to stay at that health club because that person knows them. And that's the health club that they go to because they're respected there. They don't want to be a someone just ignoring them or, oh, hey, Hey, wait a minute. Uh, did you pay last month's bill? Cause I just saw it click in and, uh, or did you pay for that last water when you're, you know, <laughs> you yeah. know, I've had some of that stuff happen to me and I'm like, Oh, I'm sorry. Was there something wrong with my billing? And they they said, Oh yeah. Uh, did you change a car? And I'm like, Oh my gosh, we got hacked. I'm so sorry. I don't even know everything out there that has my card. Yes. And I'm, I'm, I actually apologize to them saying, I wish you would have reached out to me. Right. That I, but, they never say my name. They never do anything any other time except if there's a problem with billing. Now, how yep. does that feel to an individual? How does that feel to you right now when I'm saying that to you, <laughs> to a person listening like, ah, that feels Cringe. yucky. Yeah, yeah, it feels cringy, right? It feels yep. yucky. So talk about the servant heart. So did you know all the philosophies of a servant heart? or were Because I felt like I was doing and learning and being what someone is that has a servant's heart. And then I saw what kind of the outline of what a servant heart is, you know, a, a leader. And I was like, whoa, that like, <laughs> I didn't go to school for that. But I'll tell you that that is how I serve because it just feels the right way. And I never felt good about people that just were given titles and then expected and demanded respect. Yeah. Yeah. It's perfectly said. And that's why you're so good at what you do and you have a great business. I want to backtrack a little bit about grassroots marketing. Yeah. You know, we did, and this is a great tip for business owners and business people out there. 90% of our marketing was referrals. Perfect. We did what we called the potpourri was a little that I can remember. We might have done a little bit more, but the a potpourri. lot of our stuff. Yeah, remember the potpourri? Yeah, <laughs> that was our advertising. And we didn't, we didn't have to, because again, building those connections, mm -hmm. when those people walk in the door, whether it's me or another front desk person, we make them feel good. Like you said, when they walk out the door and go to, to dinner with their friend, their friend goes, man, I need to find a gym. I'm tired. Well, I'm at Royal Courts, man. You should meet Steve, Tony and Jim. And Melinda over there, they're great people. The fitness staff's great. It still works today. 78 or 2023, doesn't matter. That's going to work for another 100 years. Yeah. Building connections, gaining those great warm referrals. Yeah. And I'm glad you said that because I will tell you that it's even more obsolete today because there aren't anybody at the front desk most of the time if you walk in. Um, it's hard to get someone on customer service. Everything is robotic. To, to actually get to a person to solve a problem for you is, it's crazy to, to try and get you know that to happen today. So I'm glad that you mentioned that, Steve, because even more today, we need to understand that people are craving for connections. That's why mental health is on the rise. It is why mental health is on the rise. It's a big, big, big issue. And uh, so, Steve, what have you found in building? I, I would love for you to talk about how you organically built your podcast. We have a lot of listeners out there that have podcasts or thinking about launching podcasts or YouTube channels. I would love for you to walk them through um, organically how you built yours. I would love that. Yeah, I started in 2022 of October and G September of October, I met a group called Pantheon, Josh, who's now my partner and met Kyle, who works with us as well, and told me about podcasting and the ability to change the world with thought leaders. That got me right away, being a servant for all those years. And when I got to the point of launching and when I first met Josh, my first question was, how do I get started? And this is a great tip for anybody who wants to get started. He said, just start recording. 
on your phone, on your tablet, on your computer, doesn't matter. Just record content. You'll get better and better and better, but you're going to have content. And here's the powerful thing I learned. It was so much fun. I know you have fun doing it too. It's fun connecting with people in this medium, in this resource. But what I did was, and this is a great tip for podcasts, and this is what I teach in my coaching, bring value to your guest. You do a great show, you that's value. But after the show, leave time to bring them a referral, a resource, a tip. Tell them how great the show was. If it wasn't great, you'll just say, you know, you don't have to tell them it was a terrible show. Never, you can never serve with negativity. <laughs> Thanks but for the, bringing my show down. Yeah. <laughs> Call me. What was it? Yeah. Right. I'll never have you back as a guest. Thank you very much. Goodbye now. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. But the value leads yeah. to this energy. And you mentioned it earlier, starts rising. Mm -hmm. Remember, a lot of my guests, a lot of your guests, we've may have met a little bit. We're a little different. We've connected a few times, but majority of your guests are going to be new to you. And you're learning about them. Well, how does that feel when it happens to you? Like you made me feel so great on this show. It said wonderful things. My listen to me. I'm I'm on fire and energy. But when you do that, that's so what I learned a few months ago from a very wealthy and successful business man who built his business on servant mm. serving, which I was so amazed. He said, Steve, one thing keep in mind, I didn't do this for years. So for you, I'm 62. So for my 20 years, I didn't do this is I didn't receive the gift I was giving. So Colleen, I'd give you a bunch of referrals and you come, you obviously you're going to say most of the time, how can I help you? Or what can I do for you? Or whatever. I'm good. Enjoy those referrals. I know they're going to be great. Well, I just turned that person into a taker. Okay. They took my referrals, whether consciously or subconsciously. I've just turned that great servant skill and that servant, what I want to call thing I just did. It's not what I want to say, but you get the idea. And I just destroyed it. N not just kill. I destroyed it. Because now that person's leaving with the energies up here. Yeah. Comes all the way back down. I wasn't realizing it. And it was months ago, because once I realized that I'm accepting gifts left and right, and I get a lot because of the value I give. So organically, people are going, hey, I'd like to introduce you to a Super Bowl champion. I reached out to Lee Steinberg, who's a sports agent. Patrick Mahomes, if you're out, you know, sports fans out there, he's this, you know, Kansas City chief quarterback. Yeah. He was on my show. That's he's the, the power of the I podcast. watch. I love him. Yeah. There you go. And yeah. With bringing value, that came from me asking in the universe, giving him to me. But the other ones were because I gave so much value to people. Mm -hmm. I'd love to be on your show. I want to talk to Steve Ramona. I want to talk to Colleen Biggs. Mm -hmm. That's how you can build it organically. Three, I leverage your guests in a great way. Yeah. You bring the, it's a win, win, win. Listener, guest, host, the best trilogy in the world. Yeah, I love that. And you lead everything you do in your life with that servant heart. And I think so many people think of what's in it, you know, what's in it for me? That's the number one thing with them, right? Everyone wants to know what's in it for me? What's in it for me? And if I do this and what is my return? And, you know, there's something about serving uh, and earning that respect from other people that I think so many uh, in business, just forget that. Like you and I talked about, we, you and I have been invited to a lot of podcasts and shows. Uh, and then when we go to, to book the time with them, they're charging money and we're like, Hey, Hey, Hey. So, um, tell me, you know, why you're charging for this show. And they're like, Oh, I got to feed my family or I've got to do this. Or, you know, how do you think that I am able to, to run the show? And, and I don't ever put that burden on my guests, right? So I set up my podcast on purpose uh, with a purpose. So so we should probably discuss that because you coach around this. And I think this is an important subject. I will even tell my clients, my specific podcast is set up for guests. It is set up in my community for the members to have additional visibility. So it is not set up for me to teach 
you know, a solo on my podcast. There are a lot of podcasts that are set up in real estate. There are a lot of podcasts set up as mortgage brokers, and they're basically teaching and giving information. So if you're a mortgage broker, you want to listen to that podcast because you're going to learn a lot from that person on how to become a seven figure earner as a mortgage broker, right? I wouldn't listen to that podcast, but it has a purpose and it was created for a purpose. Mine was put together for visibility for my clients, for my community, for the people that I engage with that I think, aha, this person has something and I want them to be able to be on my podcast so I can shout them from the mountaintops, give them more visibility, send more people their way because I can't single-handedly change the world. But if I can be orchestrated with other people in the same orchestra and we're all playing the same tune, we can have a greater effect, a greater impact. Yeah. It's perfectly said. I say it takes a village. (laughs) We're going to change this world. It takes a village. It takes a community, whatever verbiage word you want to use. And I use this. I haven't talked about this for a while, but I talk about um, our own little world. If Steve Ramona works on his world and then connects with Colleen's world and then Tony, Jim, Debbie, guess what? The world gets bigger of serving, of changing the world. Again, back to your fantastic phrase of we can't do it alone. We can't. Mm. If you want to yeah. make an impact, it, it, it's nobody should go st- solopreneur. I've, I, I liked it before, but now I'm kind of dabbling. I like entrepreneur because solopreneur means like, okay, Steve's on his own. Colleen's like, we're not. Because Steve and Colleen have partnered together Mm -hmm. to change the world. We're not solopreneurs. We're togetherpreneurs. I don't know if we made just a name, but (laughs) we're doing this preneur thing together. Yeah, I I totally agree with you. And, you know, there's so many different titles. Again, that's why I'm an anti-title person that they try and people will try to put those titles on me a lot. I'll do something specific or act a specific way. And someone will say, oh, are you uh, do you have OCD? And I'm like, no, <laughs> nope, I don't. Or they'll say, I say, well, I don't eat meat. Uh, just, you know, only if it swims, not if it walks on the on the land uh, and vegetables are like, oh, so you're a pescatarian. I'm like, if that's what you need to label it, fine. How come I can't just say these are my preferences in food? And someone said, did you know you're a pescatarian? I'm like, I don't apply. I used to allow people to apply labels to me and I don't anymore. So if you need to label that somehow to make you feel better, great. I know how I eat, right? And I don't really have it in a box because I pay attention to my health. So I think when 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 you're someone who leads that way, Steve, then it kind of consumes your entire life. It doesn't just consume your business because you can't be somebody with a servant heart in your business and then be an asshole as a dad or, you know, a narcissist as a a husband. You you can't. Does that make sense? Like, oh, it's they cross over all the time, whether it's a servant, whether it's purpose, whether it's there's a personal professional crossover all time that work-life balance nobody achieves that (laughs) it's not a real thing because it's priority i always say what is the priority today is your son a priority today because they have a field trip then today the priority is your son and that's a percentage of where you're going to be spending your time this week if you want to call that balance Right? Yep. And then what is most important today, your business or maybe your health or, you know, if I were to balance out my day, it's like I started by educating, reading, praying. Right. I'm always filling my head with books and education and, you know, Rich Dad, Poor Dad is the new series I'm going through now. Been through Think and Grow Rich. Like I read that at least once a year. Thoughts are things. We know that. Then I work out. I always make a protein shake, right? So I take care of my health early. I don't wait until the end of the day if I have time left. It's like an entrepreneur who pays themselves first versus an entrepreneur who pays themselves last after all their expenses and they wonder why they never make any money. So I don't well I don't know about y'all, but I could <laughs> list billionaires and they all pay themselves first, not the government yep. ever. Yep. But... Most individuals don't, 
and they pay taxes first, they pay mortgage first, they pay expenses first, and they don't pay themselves first. So again, it's this small shift of thinking. So if I'm serving first, Steve, then I know that the rest is going to take care of itself because I serve first. And I'm shocked at how many people still in today's world doesn't do that. It's why mental health is on a rise. It's why people are drowning in content. There's not enough connection. I mean, one of the best advices of something we could give on today's podcast is who have you not connected with in a while that's come on your mind? Send them a text right now. Open up your phone, send them a voice text, send them a Facebook message. The, my most favorite messages are when people say, hey, I was just thinking about you today and I just wanted to reach out and say, hey, I appreciate you or I love you or this or that. And my son, my son-in-law, Spencer, I stopped like sending voice texts to all my kids on their birthdays. I don't know what had happened. I probably got busy and that's my fault. Yeah. And and he said to me one day, yeah, you don't send us messages on our birthdays like you used to anymore. And I was like, that mattered to him. We don't know if that mattered to a person if we never heard back from them. Right. So I'll tell you, those messages change people's worlds. They do change their worlds. That's change an them. easy thing you can do. Well, serving is easy. That people ask me, well, how do I serve? We all have an innate, whether you're in prison, yeah, wherever you're at, you've done a bad deal. We've all made mistakes. We've all done wrong things. Yeah. But in our core is serving. We want to, because we know how it feels when somebody serves us. It's a great feeling. Mm-hmm. Will it last for five seconds, five minutes, five hours, five weeks, or five months? We have a great feeling when somebody serves us. And it's interesting. I do this challenge and I'll give it to your audience. It's a great challenge. Do it. <clears throat> and I'm working on a workbook to do it. So audience on Monday, I want you to wake up, pull out a book, notebook or something. And every person virtually and in person that you meet or on the phone, wherever, bring them value, serve them. Tip, resource, referral, great smile. Oh, your baby's got a beautiful dress. That's all serving. That's all bringing positive energy. Write down their name and how they felt. Write down their name and how they felt. If you forget, don't worry about it. Friday or Saturday at the end of the week, I want you to think three things. How did it make you feel? How to make them feel? But the most important thing, how did your life, your week change? Mm-hmm. Was it positive? Was it negative? And here's the thing. It's a great practice. The more people you meet, the more you can do. Guess what? You start connecting more. Back to what you said, Colleen. And here's the other thing. More people want to connect with you because you brought value. I get three to 10 referrals a day. I know you get a lot too because we've talked about it. Because I brought value to somebody. I'm going to tell you a story. I met with a gentleman yesterday. Do not know him. It was a referral. It was a cold one-on-one. And this is what I do when I meet somebody like everybody, especially a new person. How can I bring him value? By halfway through the call, he shut up and listened. And he put his head down. I said, I know you're writing notes. I'll keep talking. By the end of that call, he goes, you have changed my life. You made my day incredible. And I just gave him my input on his business and how I serve and He had a servant heart and he teaches relationships. You don't need to go that deep, but I could have said one thing and changed the whole phone call. And I'm going to give you all of you a real life example. I didn't do this purposely, but it's just how I think you mentioned the pizza and I got hungry, but my serving brain, I believe there's a part of your brain that's serving. I'm going to mention that on the show because one, it is making me hungry, but what I do, I promoted your sponsor again. (laughs) I'm being very transparent, but none of you saw that or heard that. You're hearing, oh, Steve's hungry. It sounds like good pizza. He's going to eat it. Those are the subtle things in serving you can do to help. In this case, I helped you. I helped the basil pizza play. It doesn't matter if I remember the name. I know I'm going to ask you. Beyond basil. Beyond basil. We'll say it again. But these are the things that are, people are are amazed by me. And I'm going to say this. I had to change it. This is, I'm not special. I'm special because I take action. 
everybody can do what I just said. It's just got to be the forefront of your mind, not uh, um, a day later go, God, I should have said something about the pizza place. It's not a bad thing if you didn't, but the more you can keep it in front of your mind of value, think and grow rich, the law of increase. Yeah. That's what got me going. Once I read that two years ago, yep. oh my God, I've been doing that. I'm going to do it more. Go back so. and keep rereading. It's like a, you know, it's one of those books that I just keep marking up and reading more and more every year. I make it a point every year. The magic I read, Think and Grow Rich, um, uh, T. Harv Eckerd's Millionaire Mind. Uh, these are ones I just keep repeating over and over again. And I'm going to share with you real quick. It's, um, you know, so interesting that you were mentioning, you know, about how you had that call with uh with an individual because I had the same thing happen to me. A gentleman called and said, I know you only work with women, but I saw you at the summit and I, I wanted to book a call with you. And I said, absolutely. And the next morning I woke up to the kindest email from that gentleman saying, for you to take the time out of your evening and stay on longer with me and 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 champion, he said, you championed my cause and really fueled me for what I'm doing and believing in me. And I just want to thank you for that. Someone I haven't had anyone do that for me in a long time. Um, I showed up at a news station about four weeks ago, uh, was being interviewed and I brought them voodoo donuts, Steve. I don't eat donuts, but I guess voodoo donuts is a big thing that moved into Arizona, right? And so I planned my route early, went there really early, left early for my house so I could get to the production uh, station early. And I brought donuts and I said, hey, I brought these donuts for the staff. Well, when the show started at 9 a.m., what do you think was sitting on the anchor desk when they opened up the show? So they talked about my company and I didn't get interviewed until the last five minutes of the whole entire hour. Right. I was not in a prime slot. They talked about me, my generosity, the voodoo donuts, the company, me again uh, for the whole first 15 minutes of the show. <laughs> All Beautiful. I did. And I didn't even do it to think that they would mention my business. I literally did it to show appreciation to them to kind of like say, hey, I appreciate you and I want to do this again and I value your time and thank you for having me down here. And it cost me, you know, 30 bucks to hand them that. It's just, you never know what is going to happen from the generosity. Um, so don't don't play the reciprocity rule all the time, I say, right? Don't wait yeah. until someone serves you to feel like you've got to go serve them back. Be the first to step up. Yeah. And, 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 and here's the thing to think about audience is we didn't talk about our businesses with these two, the email you got and this gentleman, he knows what I did. I never pitched him once. Mm -hmm. You never pitched this person. Yeah. It was truly giving him value mm -hmm. to help him. That's all my thought yeah. was. Yeah. My sub thought is, yeah, maybe he's going to refer some people to me. Maybe I can get a client, but I didn't talk to him about that. Mm -hmm. It was the focus on him because and, and audience, here's the power of this. And it probably happened to you too. He at the end goes, Steve, you've given me so much. How can I help you? And I gave him a couple flyers. I sent him for some events I'm hosting. Again, it's that infinity loop of serving. You've got to give, put it out and receive it. And you did the voodoo. You didn't think about it. I'm promoting voodoo and ask. It's not a scoreboard. This is, I love sports. I'm a big sports guy, but there's no scoreboard in serving. You said it earlier. If I give you three referrals calling, don't expect ref three referrals back. Your universe will change. That's going to make you more money because that's the yeah. bottom line here. We need money. My universe has changed so much in the last year. Money has come left and right out of places I never thought it would come. Audience, yeah. think about that. You wake up in the morning, you got a Zelle payment for something that you did, like you mentioned that year ago, a month ago, a week ago, <laughs> it's happening to me more and more. Yeah, That's how you build your business. Mm -hmm. And if your business is struggling, go serve other businesses and partner up with them and make money there with an it's affiliate partnership. First rule in business when it comes to money too, they say you're struggling for money, go give some away. I love it. The first thing that they say, every <laughs> money so book you read, they say you're struggling for money. Go give some away and it'll come back to you in droves. You know, that's why Mahomes is one of my favorite 
quarterbacks, uh, Peyton Manning, another favorite quarterback. These gentlemen, they show up for their team. They do the work that they need to. But if you know, because you've interviewed him. He's so passionate about his team. He's so passionate about the other men that are on his team with him. Uh, he shows up for them and he serves like like no other. And I've seen so many quarterbacks like make it all about them. And that's why their teams don't do so well. But he's just different because of that's how he leads. Yeah. And leadership in that type of capacity Get you to the Super Bowl, wins you Super Bowls. Right. The Rock it, is a perfect example. Rock is my favorite actor and person. Too. I slash for <laughs> you too. See, we're brother and sister from another mother. Because again, he serves and people go, well, he did a video about giving this MMA fighter a house. But when you watch the video, it was all about the fighter, his struggle, his obstacles, mm-hmm. and here's a reward. Yeah. He's got I the money that. to do it. Well, Steve, I know everyone already is going to be like, oh, how do I connect with Steve? We have a a plethora of links here. Uh, A, I want them to sign up for your newsletter just to start uh, and go to your YouTube and download your show. Right. So subscribe to your YouTube show for sure. Your podcast as well. So tell us the name of your podcast again. You have Doing Business with a Servant Heart podcast and then... um, you have your podcast on Pantheon, right? We have that link as well. Did you want to talk yeah. about that? Yeah. So it's it's on all the podcast, Apple, Spotify, iHeartRadio, and Pantheon. Yeah. You know, is, is uh, the platform that I started it with. I, I do want to announce I'm launching a TV show on Apple TV. Yes. I don't think you know that. Yeah, it's called Together We Serve. Oh, I love Doing it. Doing business and life with a servant's heart. So I want to incorporate the professional and personal because- A mother with five kids, single, you're a servant already, Mm -hmm. but who says you can't serve the teachers? You can't serve the principal, serve your friends. Mm -hmm. Always think of ways of serving, even when you're struggling. And here's a piece of advice, another piece of advice. When you're struggling, whatever it is, stop the struggle, pray is what me and you do. I might meditate, but go out and serve somebody. Go to a homeless guy, give him money, whatever that may be. And a real quick story, it happened to me, struggled a couple of years ago, went to the grocery store, left my work, two o'clock. I never do that, but it was, it was done. Yeah. And this lady in front of me had a baby and I just had the Holy Spirit come through me. I give the guy, the clerk, my credit card, young guy, he goes, what the hell are you, dude? Well, you, you can't buy. I said, no, I can pay for it. It's, just do it. And I have 20, 30, 40. I don't know how much. I don't care how much it was. So I bought her groceries. She kind of, no, no, no. I said, don't let me do it. Bought mine, and as we're walking out, she starts crying, and I hug her, and you know what's going on. She goes, "We just, my husband just lost his job last week. Mm. This is going to help us with groceries." I did not know that. Yeah, it was just my universe talking to me and me listening. We always don't listen, but try to listen as much as you can. But not what I did is the most important thing. Here's the most important thing: What is she going to do when she goes and talks to her husband when she gets home? She's going to tell the story. So I just lifted him. I lifted her. I even lifted the baby because of energy. They're going to probably pay it forward or think about it. Maybe one time, maybe time. It doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. But you know my day? The next day I got a referral and a sale. I bet you did. They don't always work like that. Yeah. But it it was a great day the next day because it works every single time Mm -hmm. when you serve somebody, something good's going to happen. I've Don't literally given the last four dollars in my account. There you to go. Buy groceries for someone. There you like, go. You know what I'm saying? Where? Don't worry. Gosh, Steve, you're you know you're so spot on with that, and you know we could go on for hours talking about this. So okay. everyone is tasked with getting out there, and if you're struggling, stop the struggle. Go serve someone today. If you're struggling with money, stop the struggle. Go give money today and just watch what happens. And oh my gosh, would you get out there and get some money books and some <laughs> and read some books like T. Harv Eckerd's Millionaire Mind or Think and Grow Rich. Think and Grow Rich to me is just kind of the basics um, of how we live our lives, right? Um, I agree. Business Bible. It is. There's it a really Bible is. for faith yeah. and it's a business Bible. Yeah, I totally agree. Uh, Steve, any last words uh, that you want to leave with our listeners? While we get ready to wrap up, any favorite quotes or recommendations? 
yeah, keep smiling, be happy, and get better 1% every day. If you started today, November 15th, you've got six weeks. That's like 42 days. Your your business or your life's going to get better 42% because 1% every day. It's a little bit. It may be serve somebody every day or whatever it may be. Just work for work towards that and you'll be very happy. Thousand percent agree with that. You know, you're the only you that's ever been. You're the only you that's ever going to be. So how do you want to live your life and leave your legacy? How do you want to be remembered? You know, I feel like I have a like Steve. I feel like I have a pretty good reputation out there. When people mention my name, they know who I am. They know what my heart is like and they know exactly what I stand for. And that feels good because that's just who I am. Right. So I, I, when, when everyone, anyone mentions the name, Steve, the same thing comes to my like, Oh, he's so kind. He's so generous. He's so, you know, full hearted. Like those are the words that come when you talk about Steve, right? He, that's just who he is. And that's what he has created because that's what he wants to be known for. And you too can be known for that. Serve first, serve first. That is like, the name of everything we're doing today. Well, thank you, Steve, again, for being on the show. Thank you for all of you being loyal listeners of the show and take the leap and coming back week after week as next week we'll bring you another amazing guest uh, that you will be able to learn from. And Steve dropped so many amazing nuggets today. And, and I know all of you are like, when's the workbook coming out? So sign up for his newsletter. You'll know when the workbook is coming out. Connect with him on LinkedIn. Follow him on Facebook. Everything is below so you can get into Steve world. And trust me when I say you want to be in Steve's world. You want to be in Steve's world. So Steve, thank you again so much to all of you. Until next time, be you and be strong. Bye-bye for now. We hope you enjoyed our show today as our guests shared their secrets on designing their life by taking the necessary leaps to expand their influence and attract the right people and clients into their lives. To start these easy steps for yourself, be sure to visit www.colleenbiggs.net forward slash freebies to download the seven ways to increase your exposure today.